Today's video is one that I've actually put back for a couple weeks because we needed a special day to make it happen. And what I mean by that is not the temperature, not the weather. We needed Mean Curtis for today. And that's simply because I didn't think that we would get as good a video if I was in a good mood. Well, he came out this morning, a uh, complete surprise. So what we have here is our subject matter. And just to lay the background, what we were doing was actually testing this can that does not exist yet. And you can see that I've even duct taped over the information here uh, because I don't want to inadvertently let it out before the embargo. <laughs> but uh, we were testing this can on full auto 450 Bushmaster. And to accomplish that, we took our ballistic advantage machine gun and hooked it up to this right here, which is a Bear Creek Arsenal 450 Bushmaster upper, which if you go to any 450 Bushmaster discussion group, you will know that this is the greatest upper receiver loved by FUDs everywhere who shoot their guns, you know, one or two times a year. And uh, good on Bear Creek for knowing their clientele because you can tell that this thing is certainly built for the lowest common denominator. It's built cheaply. And there are two ways that a company can bring a product to market cheaply. Well, really three. They can blow it out in quantity such to the point where the, they're doing volume instead of margin on the thing. So you basically take margin and multiply it by a billion and you get... A whole bunch. Well, 450 Bushmaster is not that super popular, so that really can't work. <laughs> but the other way is that you use substandard components, uh, usually cosmetic blends or something like that from someone else, or you substantially reduce the man hours that are put into the product, and you don't have to pay your staff as much to do it, so therefore your margin on the product increases. How we do stuff like this for uppers, if we're going to go out and, and test them to see how well they run, is we'll get them super hot, run them super hard, which this test did, <laughs> and then we'll throw them in the safe and let them settle for you know a week or so. And usually we'll take them right back out and try to shoot them, see if they work, and Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Full Auto will bring out the best and sometimes the worst in a product. Well, this one did not work. Worked fine during the test, but did not work when we took it back out. And what we're gonna do here today is take a look under the hood. So first things first, I'm gonna see if I can get this can off here. I may have to go get some tools to make this happen. To make it run, I borrowed a Radian Raptor from one of my other guns. The bolt carrier group was included in the device. Just to be nitpicky, we might as well start off on the right foot. This is an off thread pitch. This is 5 8 by 32 rather than the standard 5 8 thread, which is 5 8 by 24. And usually, what that means when a company does this is they'll say something along the lines of, for safety, we threaded it an off thread pitch so that you couldn't put a 30 caliber device on the end of it. And while there is some credence to that, what that tells me is that they think that you're stupid that you can't tell the difference between a 30 caliber hole and a 45 caliber hole and therefore the decision has to be made for you and they're going to thread it in an off thread pitch which usually locks you in to their after factory supply of muzzle equipment or one of their friends that makes after factory muzzle equipment in that pitch uh, obviously much more expensive at that point <clears throat> This barrel profile is pretty large, but I'm not gonna gripe too much because that gives you an extra little bit of area to index. And again, what that means is if they've got these large dimensions, then they don't have to spend as much time precision lapping this surface here, this junction between where your muzzle equipment would be and where your can would seat up because total indicated run out is reduced when you have a larger diameter than that of a smaller diameter. So that is kind of, again, some technical speak, but uh, for the most part, you'll see larger diameter stuff because it takes less time. Looks like five bolts that hold this thing on, which is actually a good thing. Usually we only get two set screws on the bottom. This one's kind of like five, six, and seven o'clock on this thing. So let's kind of just check here and see what we've got. So. That one is tight, that one won't move. 
I can't really reach that one. I can't reach that one either. So we're going to take the handguard off here in a minute to take a look underneath of it, provided that I can get it off, uh, and we'll we'll get a better look at these here in a second. But yep, there we go. See this? This is loose. This has started to walk loose. And what that tells me is either they did not apply seizing compound. At this point, you would at least need red Loctite, but probably rock set at this point would be best. So these two screws here are loose. Let's see if I can get. And that one is loose as well. So three of the five one of only one of which I can get to is loose and what that tells me is that they didn't apply that compound they didn't take the time to do that or they didn't torque them properly or they didn't torque them evenly and what that means is when this gun is rattling around then the thing can shift and begin to walk those out again we'll take a closer look at that when I get the handguard off let's take a look and see how tight the handguard is so I just when I went to go get this I went ahead and uncovered this. So I wasn't planning on taking the handguard off, but maybe we can get it off. So first off, let's just check the bolts. And it's pretty tight. It's pretty tight. They did a good job on that. Good, good. We can live with that. And of course, as we, as we go, these are going to get easier. Yeah, I just stripped my tool. Son of a gun. So that is some super sad face stuff, guys. They actually don't have another uh, key of that size out here. They are Torx. So uh, they're few and far between around here. I guess I should just buy better tools. But really the important thing is we can see that those bolts are moving, uh, which is a problem. But the other thing that I really wanted to show you guys that I may be able to get if I take it back to the shop and find another tool to take the handguard off is the gas tube. Uh, we did not pop the gas tube, but you can definitely tell that it is discolored a little bit. It is definitely starting to reach the temperature limit uh, at which gas tubes start to go. For those who don't know, that's normal. It is designed to be the wink leak so that it goes before the rest of the critical components go. So I'm not gonna beat them up too bad on that. I just wanted to note that it is starting to look kind of bad. So while we're here, I have a sling here. This is my Savvy Sniper sling. If you guys buy anything from Savvy Sniper, uh, tell Brian and those guys that uh, they should sponsor the channel because I like the product. But uh, we have some QD pieces here and we're just gonna go across here and see if, see. Okay, that one's good. Try the other front one here. Yeah. Okay, what are you gonna say guys? What are you gonna say? Yeah, this one won't even go in. <laughs> Look at that, are you serious? Let's try a different, let's try a different one, just to be sure. These are GG and G, okay? Like, sorry. <laughs> like, I don't know if that name's super popular anymore, but I have been a huge fan of GG and G. Now that one went in. Guys, you can't make this up. The cutie swivel points on the rail are trash. The finish on the barrel, again, I can't really show it to you guys, but it looks like it started to degrade a little bit. It was kind of all the same kind of color here, and now it's looking pretty green. Uh, Park rising might be damaged. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it definitely did not like being run that fast that hard. So we're going to go ahead and set this aside, except for one other thing that I want to point out. I don't know what that is for right there, but I have a really nice cut on my finger from that thing. I really wish they had not done that. I'm not sure why it is designed that way, if it's designed that way, or if that is damage from use. This is actually the reason I think that it stopped running to begin with, and again, man hours. It doesn't matter how awesome the components are that you use, which again, I'm not so sure about the quality of components. I don't really know anything about Bear Creek Arsenal, but they clearly did not spend very much time staking this gas key. That thing wobbles. And what that is, is on one side, they smacked it really hard and they pushed the stake into the space. And then on the other side, they didn't. And what that means is that that gas key can wobble loose with a lot of hardcore use. The other thing I will say is, I don't know if it came like this from the factory, but this extractor looks terrible. 
I don't know what is up with that. Uh, if that is a broken extractor or if it came like that and it was just machined that poorly, I'm not entirely sure. Again, close-ups for you guys on that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get in here and see if there's anything else. I have not taken this apart yet. Uh, I didn't go any farther than the loose gas key. So this, we're gonna do it live. This upper was brand new when it came here. Uh, it looks like they used a nickel boron firing pin uh, that doesn't seem to have any problems with it. We have some deformation on the cam pin. This is typical. Uh, we usually see this sort of stuff right at the junction between where it sits into the uh, bolt and where it goes in through the uh, channel in the carrier. Uh, we see a little bit of that. Not usually after less than 100 rounds though. <laughs> so just a fair warning. Just throwing it out there that that looks a little bit premature to me. Gas rings look fine. I wouldn't expect them to be jacked up. Uh, very little carbon buildup, which is what we expect considering that we fired less than 100 rounds through this thing. I don't know, I have to do an accurate count. Evan ma ran two magazines. <laughs> I ran a magazine, so that's 21 rounds, and then Matt ran a magazine. <laughs> just for kicks, so that's 20, that's 20 uh, uh, public education math. 28, <laughs> and uh, and then I ran seven mag or 10 magazines at seven a pop. The wings on the extractor look fine. So now that I've torn this thing apart, both figuratively and literally, I'm gonna go back and take a whole bunch of close-ups to fill in what didn't make it because either uh, lighting or angle. And what I wanna leave you guys with is this. Not all AR-15s are created equal. Somebody may tell you that their $450 trash build or poverty pony is equivalent to somebody's $1,500, $2,000, $2,500, $4,000, uh, AR-15 that they paid from from a reputable manufacturer and most probably that is not the case Even if you're using high quality components final assembly quality assurance uh, From people from a reputable company that tests their products and knows how guns go down is really really important and part of me feels bad that Bear Creek Arsenal is uh, getting torn up uh, on this one, but at the same time they should probably do a little bit better job on their products that are going out. But who am I kidding anyway? They, they're making money hand over fist uh, selling these things to people that don't know any better. So it is what it is. You can either pay it forward and pay for it in product development, or you can pay for it when you send it out to the market and somebody who actually knows what they're doing gets their hands on it.